All right, David Harry here, and in this video, I'm going to show you what I believe to be the best quality and most cheapest XLR Phantom Power Microphone Unit, which is also a two-channel one. And it is this, which is the Behringer Euphoria UMC 202 HD. Now, I know immediately people are just gonna go, hold on a minute, Dave. Isn't this just a USB audio interface, which is kind of designed for computery stuff, things like door systems or audio software, and just a way of getting like line ins and mic ins and headphone outputs and line outputs from the, like a computer and stuff like that? Well, yes, that is its primary function. However, there is a particular function about this device, which I come across a while back and I've been using it for it since. And that is the fact that it will work standalone and independent away from a computer. So literally all you've got to do is power it and you can use it as an independent standalone preamplifier unit, which is something that I've not managed to do with other similar small USB audio interface units. Now what I'm gonna do here, I'm just going to turn the camera over and I'll kind of go through the front and the back of this and I'll explain exactly how it does this and then I will give some clear examples of it being used as an independent standalone microphone preamplifier. Okay so a close-up look then at the Behringer interface and on first glance this is going to look very similar to other two input to output USB audio interfaces as in we've got two inputs here input one input two. Each of these inputs can either be XLR or quarter inch jack. And then next to the inputs, we've then got the main gain controls for each of the inputs. So these controls here, gain one controls the gain for input one, gain two controls the gain for input two. There's also like, you know, clip and signal lighting and stuff there. On each of the inputs here as well, we've got the option to go line or instrument as far as the preamp is concerned. And also we've got a pad function for each of the inputs as well. And then next to that, we have got our master output control here. Also, we've got a headphone socket and a phone socket for controlling the headphone output and what have you. Also, and I'll get back to this shortly, is the direct monitor button. Now, that is all fairly much exactly the same as most other boxes that do the same job. And then on the back, what we've got is the USB socket for connecting it to a computer. Then we've got the button here for switching off and on phantom power. And then our two outputs, output one and output two or left and right. In this instance, these are on quarter inch jack, although I believe these are wide TRS, so these can be balanced or unbalanced. Now, here's the thing with this unit that sets it apart from other units that have tried. What happens with this, when you plug it into a power unit or anything USB that's supplying power, the unit itself will activate. Now, most of the devices that I've used, when you plug a USB cable in and then say plug it into a power supply, it doesn't necessarily turn the unit on or it doesn't at least activate all of the functions. So usually devices like these have to be triggered by the computer and say the host software in order for, well, basically all the inputs and the outputs to work correctly. But in this instance, as soon as you supply anything to that USB socket that's got power on, the unit goes active. Now at that point, what happens here if you click in the direct monitor button, now just quickly, direct monitor and what this does, it effectively takes the inputs and then sends them straight to the outputs on the back. And the reason why you do that is to help avoid latency issues when you're working with door systems or any kind of computer system which would introduce latency within the software. That direct monitor function helps you to monitor the input at the same time as what the door or the software that you use and is generating its sound. So therefore, you're not gonna kind of be subject to the latency from the input here, running through the door and then coming back out the door to the output. So like I say, these just go straight then to the back outputs. So input one and input two end up coming straight out of output one and output two. Now, once again, the weirdness with this particular unit is when it is being plugged into, say, a power supply unit or a battery or anything like that, that's USB, this unit just doesn't seem to need any prompting from a door or a computer in order to activate all of its functions. So what happens as soon as you apply any power, 
when you click in the direct monitor button here it will then activate everything that's working on the front and then send them straight to the back there so as you can guess there what that then means is that we can use this as a two channel pre-amplifier all on its own with either XLR or jack inputs and also with phantom power anyway so that's the basic description of what this unit is doing when I apply USB power to it but just to be clear I've tried this on a couple of other units and it doesn't work but on this it does so now what I'm going to do is get back to showing you some examples of exactly what this is capable of doing with different microphones <laughs> So to the first example then of using the Behringer as the preamplifier and in this instance also a phantom power unit. So what I'm using here is my Sennheiser ME64 which is just out the frame here. Now this is a pencil condenser microphone. It's the one that I usually use for all my pieces to camera stuff indoors. Now the thing with this particular microphone though, it can be self-powered, which is how I usually use it. It self-powers itself. I plug it straight into the mic input on the camera. But in this instance, I'm plugging it into the Behringer, which I will show you in a second. And then the Behringer is powering the microphone and then the Behringer sends the signal into the camera. Now, here's how I've got it set up. Because in this particular instance, I'm powering the Behringer with a battery charger or a battery bank. So although this is a battery bank which you would use to kind of top up things like an iPad or anything like that, I'm actually using it just as a straight power supply now for the Behringer. So as we can hopefully see on the back there, the battery is just plugged straight into the USB input on the Behringer. And as I was saying just before when we were looking at the close-ups on the Behringer, for whatever reason, the Behringer doesn't require like any kind of signal to be sent from the computer in order for it to activate its circuitry. And it will indeed do what it's doing right now, which is act as an independent preamplifier and, and, a, and phantom power unit right now. Anyways, let me just get the battery down here a little bit and I'll try and show you a little bit more about how I've got this set up. Okay, so if we look from the front of the Behringer there, hopefully this might go in focus. The microphone is connected to the mic input one here and the way this is set up, this is actually on a balanced cable right now. So this is XLR balanced. We don't require a balanced connection to the camera because the camera doesn't do balanced anyway. This is just it's just a like you know an unbalanced mic input on the camera. Anyway, so the microphone connects to the input there, and then I set an appropriate gain level there for that particular channel, channel one on the Behringer. And then for the final kind of summing to the output, I then use a master output here as well. So I get the gain correct for the preamplifier stage for the unit itself through its input. And then I get the final summing level to the camera from the master output. Now at the camera, I've got its input set down to its lowest because don't forget, a camera like this, it has a mic preamp. So what you can't really be doing is putting a mic preamp up high on a camera and then feeding it a preamplified mic signal. It's not gonna work that well. You'll kind of quickly get into problems to do with the way you gain staging and you'll probably very quickly start to introduce noise and stuff like that to the circuitry and the extra two gain systems that are being applied and various other things. So in this particular instance, when it's a camera with a microphone preamp built in, you just drop the signal right down to so as low as it'll go on the input and then do all the gaining from whatever is doing the gaining for the microphone. Now, just to show you how this, well, to basically show you that it's definitely working. As I explained before, the reason why I can do this is because of the direct monitor function here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna switch it out of the signal chain and we should hear my voice go off. So. Yeah, what I was saying, I've just switched it off and there was no signal, as you could obviously hear, because my voice went missing. Also, as well, just to show you here, there's the mic input. So if I, I need to try and keep an eye on where I've got it set. So what I'm going to do is just back it off and I should start getting a bit lower than a bit lower. Yeah, that signal is definitely going down. So let me bring it back up again. Okay. I think it was somewhere about there. Now here's another thing as well. I don't recommend doing this, which is switching the power off and on f for the Phantom whilst you're kind of in use and stuff like that. It shouldn't damage the system, I don't think, but I'll try it anyway. So what I'm gonna show you now is I'm gonna disengage the Phantom 
uh, the phantom power by switching it off. And what we should hear, because obviously microphones like this are basically capacitors, we should still hear me for a little bit, and then it should start going like lower or crackly and then disappear at some point. So let me just do that. So that's it switched off. Now I should still be here and then I should start fading or quality should get worse. Let me have a look, I think. Yeah, that looks like it's gone now, so hold on. So that's it back in again. I may have had to dip that quickly there if it bumped too much when I put the power back in. But what you should have heard there is as the whole thing was discharging because it's basically a capacitor system, I should have been getting like quieter or worse quality until it should have kind of gone completely. Okay, so there we go. Um, and then obviously on the back here as well, it's just a line out to the camera. Uh, like I said before, no need to be balanced for this system because the camera isn't balanced. Although the output on this, you know, despite the fact that it is on quarter inch, it will do balanced over quarter inch. But the thing is, in all honesty, and regardless of what you may hear other people saying, if you're running a balanced system compared to an unbalanced system, there is absolutely no difference whatsoever in the sound. So you don't get better sound quality because you're going balanced. Balanced, in a nutshell, is mostly used for very long cable runs, or if you're using certain peak voltage settings between amps and preamps and lines, and stuff like that depending upon what you're recording and what you're recording it with you might want to use balance because of the voltage differences however there is no difference in audio quality and the basic use for balance cable is because what happens is it sends an out of phase variation of the signal down the cable so what happens then is any kind of stuff that gets induced into the signal run via the cable such as RF, AM and stuff like that can hopefully most that can be kind of like knocked out by re back at the other end when you recombine the in and out of phase versions of the signal that's sent down the cable if anyone's got an interest in how balancing works on that level let me know in the comments and I'll do a quick video explaining how that works on a balance system nonetheless this isn't balanced because the camera isn't it's balanced from there to there but not over to the camera anyways that'll do for this quick example I say quick it wasn't that quick I'll do another example or two and I'll do them much quicker now so for the second example then I'm using a Behringer Ultra Voice XM8500 which is just there. Now this is a dynamic microphone so this doesn't require phantom power. So right now the Behringer, you, uh, the Behringer preamp unit, not the Behringer microphone, the Behringer preamp unit is now just applying preamplification. That's all it's doing so it doesn't have to send power because it's a dynamic microphone. Now in this instance, don't know if we can see this um, or don't know if we would notice this from the previous settings but what I've done here, I've just had to gain things up a bit more as well. And the reason for that is, is because dynamic microphones are just not quite as loud on their outputs as, say, a typical condenser microphone would be. So you would have to gain a little bit more uh, than what you would do with a typical condenser. Um, there's another thing in there as well. You know, I was about to say, you know, it's not as sensitive as a condenser. The thing is, sensitivity is not really an indication of level. What it is, a microphone can be very sensitive within itself to, like, you know, sound pressure level or frequencies and stuff like that. That is independent of, of how loud the output is off the microphone. So just because some microphones have a loud output, that doesn't necessarily indicate that it is a sensitive microphone. It just might be something to do with the impedance matching and stuff like that, or indeed, it just might might be that the microphone itself has a fairly loud output in this instance anyway nonetheless i'm testing a dynamic microphone and i'm talking way too much nonsense right so i think this will definitely give us an idea of what's going on here oh yes and this time around i'm powering the actual Behringer preamp from just a standard um, like you know charging unit plugged into the plug board that I've got behind my monitors. I can't show you that right now because it's all hidden behind the monitor. But basically, it's the power supply that I would normally use for. Oh, I don't have it to hand. A little uh, Amazon Fire Seven tablet. So I'm basically you know showing you that this can be used either with the battery as I was using it just before or now using it just with a standard USB power supply and um, the other thing as well because these are designed to work from a computer's power supply 
I don't know. It might even only require something like 500 milliamp or something like that to run. Not entirely sure because don't forget with something like this, when it's designed to run directly off a computer, there's only a certain amount of current that a computer can send down the USB cable, especially if it's older versions of USB like two and stuff like that. Anyways, I'm going into boring nonsense here. Let me get on to the next example. So for my third and final example of a microphone being powered and preamplified by the Behringer Euphoria UMC 202 HD got it right I'm now using one of my favorite microphones of all time and that is the Rode Video Micro now in this particular instance I am also using another component within this chain because as we already know the only kind of power that the Behringer can send out is going to be phantom power which is 48 volts and the likes of the video micro here this requires electric voltage which is kind of voltages in and around the two and a half to five to seven volt range something like that so we can't feed this 48 volts it may even damage the microphone if we do that but it most certainly won't work anyway so how we get around that is to introduce this little doonad into the chain here which is the Rode VXLR Plus so what happens here the VXLR Plus actually does like a little step down of the voltage for us so we can use 48 phantom power to power an electric microphone such as the Rode Video Micro so that is exactly how I've got this all set up right now I'm just looking at my levels here and <clears throat> just to make sure I'm kind of like in the ballpark for a decent level and stuff anyways yeah so I think that'll probably conclude this video anyway uh, there will be other links as well in the video descriptions i may pop some stuff up as as you know as this video has been playing through to so do with other things that you might find interesting to do with some of the microphone stuff and the preamps and things like that indeed i will have popped up or will do now a video explaining what the VXLR Plus is all about. So if you've got an interest in any of the mics that have been kind of going through here, I'll throw some stuff in the descriptions and I'll do some stuff maybe at the end on the, the little button things at the end of the video and stuff like that. Anyways, right, so if you've liked the video, please give it a massive thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell notification icon and all that kind of stuff. Also, there'll be kind of things and links to the stuff I've been using in the video description, you know, things to the Behringer, some of the mics and things like that, maybe some other bits and pieces anywho i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now